from the high desert in the great American Southwest. Want to take a ride? This is the UFO Report with Brian McCoy. So, there is uh, that new Steven Spielberg series that's out that a lot of people are watching and um, as a matter of fact, there's like all these crazy news stories on it that more and more people are open to the fact that aliens are real and stuff because of this now, which is kind of funny because that's the rumor behind the scenes is that Steven Spielberg did Close Encounters of the Third Kind to do that exactly to make people be okay with it, you know, and now he's doing that again, 30 years or 40 years later or whatever it's been. You know, that's pretty nuts. So anyways, the first episode, they talk about one of the greatest UFO cases that I have ever heard of. And it's it's just ingrained in my brain because it happened in the early 2000s, I want to say, like maybe 2012, 2013, maybe. Hello, it's 2000, 2008. 2008. You're talking about the yeah. small Stephenville, Texas one? Stevensville, Texas. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, 2008. So 2008, me and you are working uh, as fab monkeys in a uh, microchip plant. And I would fill my iPad, my iPod with Coast to Coast AM early podcasts, um, like the very first podcasts, you know, that were uh, crazy podcasts about stuff like that. Project Camelot, all these crazy things. And you ha- it just did they talk I, about I, that one on Coast to Coast back then? Live as it was happening, bro. There is oh, a wow. There is a news uh, a person that worked for the Stevensville paper, and she um, was just a regular news reporter for the Stevensville paper. This story happens. I think she said she saw it. This story happens where this massive UFO shows up over Stevensville, Texas. I mean, this like thing a flying was huge. Dorito, they called it. Yeah, just so miles triangle. and miles big. Yeah, so big that the story I remember is about this guy. He was out uh, hunting for deer and he went into the little wooded area by his house and he was just prospecting that day or whatever they call it. And all of a sudden he looks up and he says he could see the UFO. He could, it was so close to him and it was so big that he could see like, things underneath the ufo crystal clear and he said he, he couldn't see open sky for as far as in any direction the ufo was so big over him right and just a crazy story absolutely crazy and let me go ahead and do this this is um he, he seemed like a, a normal dude that wasn't trying to gain anything from it like he was just living his life and had this experience and then you know it yeah. was sharing it didn't seem like one of those people i was just trying to you know like get famous from it or anything or had any ill intentions behind it you know yeah where the hell are my uh i I, where's my share screen i lost my little share screen button that's weird what do you mean you don't you can't hit present oh there it is i see it it's it's, mcclay is ripped that's what that's where we add another one of your heads and then we go he's at a 10 yes yes all right so here is the uh original news news story on it back then Oh, wow. American small town. The folks here are proud of their high school's football team and proud to be the number one dairy county in the state. Stephenville may be typical, but what's happening in the skies above it is a whole nother story. It kind of is the talk of the town. Angela Joyner. Angela Joyner is a reporter with the town's newspaper. She's now on the strangest and possibly the biggest story of her life. For days, people have been emailing and calling the newsroom saying... They've seen a UFO. It was very intense, bright lights. I keep hearing that over and over and over. And they cut, they spanned a wide area. It was so fast when it took off, you know, and it made not a sound. Ricky Sorrells was deer hunting in these woods when he says the UFO stopped and hovered just over his head. And I did just like this, and I could see it. And if you look at the trees, you know, it's right here. I mean, it's 300 foot up right here. 
Sorrell's thought about shooting at the object, but didn't want to start an interstellar war. So he <laughs> hightailed it back to the house. He still isn't sure what he saw. I would like to think that it was man-made. I would like to think that. Uh, to know that, I don't know. You see it right there, east northeast, is right here, right in this direction, right here. I saw it at about 70 degrees up from the horizon. Jason, why are you laughing? Saw the object describing. Pause. I was it. laughing because it was funny, bro. That was hilarious. Starting an interstellar war. You know that news reporter like put. <laughs> You know that that news that's, reporter put that in. I know that's like why the shit has like stigmas and shit because assholes like that yeah. throw that stuff in there, yeah. making them sound like a whack job. You know. Yeah. So I remember this so clear because it was as it was as Angela Joyner was reporting on it, she was calling into all these shows, coast to coast. Um, you know, uh, they all these people were doing interviews with her. It was like you were hearing it live. So it it was it was fun it was it made the job better and it was a good time dude and i i this it's just such a big a major memory in my head and so, it's the first episode in this uh so this so, so, so he hearing it back then in 2008 and then watching this episode review the episode how did you feel about it do you feel like they executed the story well and then it must have been cool like seeing them go back and interview the people again and talk to them right yeah, well, Angela Joyner is is still uh, doing the circuit, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, she's like so really she, proactive about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and a lot of those. I mean, how would you be proactive about it if you saw something like that, or if you, it, or would you just not say something? If I saw something like that, I would be yelling from the rooftops that I seen it. You know what I mean? Like, I I would be, I you know, how could you not? No, I I, I agree. So anyways, yeah, man, I thought that they did a decent job. Um, what do you think of it so far? Have you seen more than just the first episode? Yeah, I saw I saw all four. I thought what it was cool, man. Um, I thought they did uh, <clears throat> just a good job, like telling the story, but they do it like the reenactment style where they like, you know, dramatize it with actors yeah. and music. And mm -hmm. um, I thought that was really well done. Um, yeah. I'm actually I, I I don't I didn't know how many episodes you did see, so I was interested if you saw the um, what is it episode two? Yes, the no wait, hang on. It has a backwards on the side I'm on. It's actually I think episode two or three, but it's the Zimbabwe one where all the students saw it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just about to bring that up. Yep. Because there's there's one gentleman they put in there. Dylan. I'm kind of glad they put him in there, but to kind of show. I guess different perspectives, but I feel like he got a lot of he screen time. Yeah. yeah, there's something odd about him. But he, he, he was, was kind of just saying, like, yeah, they all made it up, this and that. It was just, yep. it was, but throughout all four episodes, that's the only pushback out of any of the um, people. That was just, it was just weird. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people that are saying that 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 guy was just lying just to just to get more screen time and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which is. Uh, but it's it's crazy know. for them to to go back and you actually see these kids grown up and you know yes. they're still sticking to the same story yeah. pretty much, right? Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. I imagine it's just as uh clear in their minds as you know, like that memory is like you can it's weird how certain memories that, that are so um imprinted on you you can even like almost smell the the same smells or, or you know, you get like a a, a taste or you know, your other senses are are impacted also rather than just your, you know, what you saw. It's very interesting, man. Yeah, so the Zimbabwe um, one, for people that don't know, it's uh, 62 students at aerial school saw spaceships and strange humanoid figures in their playground. The 1994 encounter, considered by many to be the most significant of the 20th century, profoundly changed the lives of the children, the headmistress, and even the preeminent Harvard uh, psychiatrist who came to investigate what they'd seen. Yeah, that was the other cool, crazy thing is that someone invested a lot of time with those kids and interviewing them. Yeah. And they seem pretty convinced. Well, I guess the, John Mack, wasn't it John Mack that went out there um, to talk to those kids? 
right? I, I don't know how much truth or how fabricated or what, you know, what, but what they're presenting, what I thought was odd is they separated all the kids and they had them draw it and all the drawings were pretty damn similar as far as like yeah. where the lights were and what color they were and the yeah. shape and yep. all that. Aerial school incident. Yep. Yep. That was uh, John Mack, I believe, that uh, went out. One of the most famous. He was a Harvard University uh, professor of psychiatry. And he's one of the most famous people involved in the UFO, talking about UFOs, you know, uh, interviewing UFO victims or abduction victims and stuff like that. Um, John Mack, there's there's a, a, a very interesting thing about John Mack. And a lot of people think that uh, he was killed, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it says here on Monday, September 27, 2004, while in London to lecture at a T.E. Lawrence Society sponsored conference, John Mack was killed by a drunk driver heading west on Totteridge Lane. He was walking home alone after dinner with friends when he was struck at 11.25 p.m. in the intersection. So a lot of people say that, you know, he was killed. But anyways, um, yeah, the encounter stuff is is pretty 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 interesting here uh, you know what's crazy to me is the, the ufos and uaps whatever you want to call them it has to be more popular than ever yeah of all time yeah when you say so yeah oh yeah 100 percent. i see people talking about them i never thought would talk about this shit yeah yeah big time this is amazing it's a pretty so, hot topic yeah check this out this is pretty cool watch this um so i saw this this <laughs> is what oh i didn't even get to, i didn't really see it <clears throat> oh hold on hold on no i'm gonna show it to you i'm just gonna go to it i got a bunch of uh videos i gotta bring up okay so this was december 8th 2012 and this is supposedly the former Russian president and prime minister discusses how each Russian president is informed about aliens. Top secret folder. This folder in its entirety contains information about aliens who visited our planet. Along with this, you are given a report of the absolutely secret special service that exercises control over aliens on the... Well, let's leave that there because I believe we can now go to Paul Harrison, our rural correspondent, who, of course, is outside the King Edward VII Hospital where the Duchess of Cambridge is being. Jeśli nie wierzy pan w koniec świata, to może chociaż dziadka mroza. No nie bardzo. Ale nie mam serca, by mówić dzieciom, że dziadek mróz nie istnieje. He's saying uh, every president gets a book. I can't say how many of them because it will cause them. Uh, he talks about all the aliens visiting Earth. Let me let me restart this real quick. So it says. Every president of Russia. Uh, gets a book labeled top secret and it talks about how many aliens have visited earth. And he says, I can't say how many of them because it will cause mass panic. This is the president of Russia. This is saying this in 2012. I never saw this. I never, I don't know if this is stuff that is coming out. Like it was heard behind the scenes. Ex like president people, of Russia. <clears throat> Hasn't yeah. Putin been like for ever? So this was, so Putin Putin or is he like left. a high ever? Oh, okay. And, and when he left, he controlled it with through this guy. This guy was one of Putin's puppets. I see. And and uh, and they switched. They kept switching positions. If I'm not mistaken, but yeah, man, I've never heard this. What are the that comments? I want to see what the comments say on this. They must be fucking like, what the fuck? Yeah. Says uh, save the video. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Um. Seriously, this is an interesting data, unlike all them CGI videos. I remember this from way back. It says we need it in English. What is the documentary he mentioned? Chronicle Men, Men in Black. How sober, uh, how, <laughs> how sober is Medvedev when this oh, is yeah, recorded? Yeah. yeah, Russian documentary Medvedev smoke, spoke about Men in Black. Look at that. YouTube... <laughs> A Russian documentary where he talks about it, it looks like. Wow. Hmm. I might have to check that out. That's pretty cool. So that was uh, pretty interesting. 
I thought I, I I'd never seen that, never heard of it, any of that stuff. So pretty cool shit. Um, I got more here. There's um. I have a video when maneuver for of uh, Muhammad Ali talking about aliens and you or I should say UFOs. Okay, uh, I've seen that. It's pretty cool. We'll definitely uh, we definitely got to talk about that. Um, this is crazy right here. Remember how we were talking about this? Like everybody has a ring doorbell. We were talking about this when the Las Vegas incident happened. How I can't believe. Yeah, no, there should be this mass footage. Yeah, because everybody has a ring doorbell, right? I mean, not everybody, but a lot of people. So Ring uh, is saying that you can earn a million dollars. Is that real? Catch. Yeah. Video doorbell company Ring offers a million dollar grand prize for capturing unaltered video evidence of real extraterrestrial life form using their Ring device. It's from Newsweek, bro. Check this yeah. shit out. Yeah. yeah. Remember how you were talking about how you see people talking about this shit that you never thought you would see talking about this shit, you know? So I don't know how ring works as far as storage. Like how long does it keep the video? Does like re-record or maybe every 24 think, hours or something like that? Or I think you could probably set it up for that, but it says here, uh, you know what I mean? Like you could probably set it up for to to even save it if you or don't want like it or external hard drive or something. Yeah. It says between October 4th and November 3rd, eligible participants can submit their ring video evidence to be reviewed by a panel of judges and extraterrestrial experts. If your There's... submission meets all the requirements listed in the official rules, which includes a definition of extraterrestrial life and definitions of required timing, sound, and video quality, and the expert is convinced that the sighting is undoubtedly scientific evidence. You may win one. What million. the? Okay, two two keywords here. <laughs> For, well, what does it mean? May. So if you do prove it, they're like, well, may not. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then, who the fuck are these extraterrestrial experts? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are their credentials? And also, why is it only a month? It should be forever. Like the, you yeah. know what I mean? Yep. It's like they know something's up. Like something's gonna go down. Yeah. That's probably why we all got that emergency fucking message on our phones yesterday, dude. The alien. Yeah, that was crazy, the right? Couple weeks, dude. That was crazy. <clears throat> um, it says here, and even if you don't catch a sighting of a real UFO, Ring is offering a chance to win an Amazon gift card worth five hundred dollars for those who display out-of-this-world creativity with their extraterrestrial costumes, what accessories, makeups, and props. So they're asking for people to fake it. So it's a, they're using it's it as a, as, a, as a promotion, you know? So it's Halloween or something? Yeah. Stupid shit. <sighs> stupid, yeah, I didn't think that was, that was real, dude. Um, this is kind of interesting. Daily Caller, investigation underway after extraordinarily extraordinary UFO spotted over Del Rio, cops say. The city of Del Rio, Texas, police department told residents Monday there is an ongoing investigation into a recent UFO sighting in the area. Hmm. So, investigation underway after UFO spotted <clears throat> over Del Rio, so, cops So, say. when the investigation is underway, who, who's doing the investigating? That's a great question. Uh, the city of Del Rio, Texas Police Department told residents Monday there is an ongoing investigation into a recent UFO sighting and in, in an, astonishing, an astonishing turn of events. A mysterious UFO was captured on video as it soared through the skies over Del Rio, leaving residents and experts baffled and intrigued. A de the department wrote in a press release shared on Facebook. Let's go take a look at it. Is it fake? What are we, what are we getting here? Uh, an astonishing turn of events, mysterious, unidentified, extraordinary incident occurred over October 1st when a few local residents noticed an unusual saucer shape in the sky and quickly grabbed their cameras to document the bizarre sight. The res resulting footage has since gone viral on social media, sparking intense speculation and discussion among UFO enthusiasts, scientists, and general public. The saucer-shaped object seemed to be flying over areas of Del Rio, erratically looking for a place to land. 
let's take a look at it. Let's see. Do we, do we have it? In my um. Oh, that's fake as fuck. In my uh. You're fucking with people. That sucks. That yeah, sucks. that looks so What a bunch of bastards. They're fucking with people. I was just gonna say because I have a Texas um UFO sighting, but the one I have is from Texas City. Yeah. That's good. That's lame, dude. Yeah. Well, at least we were able to debunk it. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'd rather just like know and then just yeah. never have to go back to that than someone yeah. be like, was that real? Is that fake? I can't fucking tell. You yeah. know, I'd rather I'd rather know <clears throat> that it's fake. The the daily caller sitting here going, got him. Add another one. Got him. Um so all right, here we go. This they got you, dude, not me. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> There's a new that's exactly what I mean. There's a I'm new uh Twitter handle I've been following called Peru Attacks. Now there's a, here's here's the cool thing about it. It's all about the crazy shit going on in Peru. Here's here's the problem. Every freaking video is in Peru is in Spanish and or Portuguese or what uh, I don't know what they maybe uh, probably Spanish. It's so, still are far from me. Very far okay. from the oh, here we go. Maybe not. Calm. Hold on. From Hold Peru. On. Yeah. Here we go. The star far from me, very far from the day of the star, come without fear. I was not afraid at all, not at all thinking about what is, how do something we know that was going to happen to me. And then I, then again, the focus on the animal and I don't see it. Again, I look to the side and I see the light that comes down from above, down, down a little bit. That's what I say. But I realized that very clearly that it wasn't just stress. Just what? stress so he's talking about his recent sighting of the the peruvian uh i forget what they Light call that was approaching me i stopped it filled up i stayed with my weapons with my breech loader i centered myself well i prayed to god pertinent and i waited right and he tells me are you going to bring me closer or not but psychologically, Luis Panduro from here had already told me the news. And that moment, I thought about the news that Luis Fanduro was telling me. And then I saw the light that if I was getting closer, I started to get closer slowly, slowly, slowly. I was already well prepared with my backloader. I didn't let him get any closer to me. When he reached the level of the tree, the trees, I took a shot right where the light disappeared. So he's saying he shot him, and then it, a, a, as he shot him, the light disappeared. And a lot of them are saying stuff like that. So it's Peru underscore aliens on Twitter. If you guys want to follow the case, they got a lot of updates on it. Um, I don't know, man. It's very interesting. There was a new attack that supposedly happened. This is a new, this is a new attack that supposedly, yeah, that supposedly happened. Um, the girl got electrocuted somehow. Um, crazy stuff. Weird, weird stuff, man. Weird stuff. Johnny, old school Johnny Carson. Weird stuff. Is that what he used to say? I think so. I don't know. Never watched it. Uh, yeah, man. So more Peruvian news. Um, it's crazy that we're still <clears throat> getting stuff out of it. I'll just say that. You know, it's very interesting. So. All kinds of stuff, all kinds of news stories. Uh, you know, people talking about people flying around in jetpacks and stuff and how stupid that is. But they also talk about the uh, Phil Schneider thing right here. Look at that. They bring up the Phil Schneider thing. It's very interesting. Very interesting. So, yeah, uh, a couple cool things to talk about this week in the UFO report. Sweet, dude. I appreciate that. You want me to play the uh, Muhammad uh, Ali video real quick? Hell yeah. It's a few minutes long. I'll let it play for like a minute or two, but um, I thought it was a pretty good uh, video to share with everybody. Yeah. Just let me know. If if you can't hear it, let me know. I just want to make sure the audio is working. Can't hear it. Really? Yep. You couldn't hear that? Uh Uh-uh. You got, you got, you're not, your audio, they moved where they put the audio button. It's on the right instead of the left. I know. I had it clicked. 
Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Real quick, here's another thing while you're doing that. Another sighting video. Oops, my bad, this my bad. Was, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is captured in Wisconsin on September 2nd. It's pretty crazy. It's a UFO behind a cloud. Hmm. Yeah. So, very interesting, man. Look at that thing. That thing's pretty fucking huge. Okay, this uh, speaking of uh, I think is this Carson? It might be Earth tonight. What I've been studying yeah. UFOs. Yeah. Did you know there are UFOs out here flying around unidentified <laughs> They're all laughing at them. Most this would be the place for them, Southern California. <laughs> I'm serious. They sighted a bunch over Georgia. I've seen them at night. Uh, they have real photos of them and the government and the people just completely seem like don't talk about it. But um Mr. Harold Salkin, Washington DC, is the head of the National UFO Bureau. Right. He brought me moving papers. I actually have moving pictures of little saucers of great steel objects coming into pictures that people took, and I'm just surprised that don't nobody talk more about that. Something they can... Another great insight into the fight game. No, I just kidding. No, I read that. But did you read the thing last night on the on the news that some physicists said that what the people of Georgia might have seen were that there are there are probably several thousand satellite objects. No. Going around the United States, around the Earth, and sometimes they disintegrate and they come back into space. At 50 feet over the highway. Well, it could. It's got to land somewhere. No. They call it swamp gas and something. They don't want, I don't know what it is, but I think I do. But uh, they actually, there are actual saucers and objects coming within our atmosphere and flying around, and people got pictures. Everybody sight the same thing in every city, the red and blue and green lights. But the people who thought it's completely brushing off as if to say, we are mentally off. But I know it's right. He's a I smart think, dude, man. Don't they oh, land, fuck, man? yeah. I didn't mean it's oh, yeah. out there intelligent people. Yeah, they add the music, though, in the background. There. Drives me yeah. nuts. Or Galvin Ding, whatever they say. <laughs> you know, why wouldn't they make contact? They probably figure they can't get no sense out of the people here. In this <laughs> yeah. You could watch yeah. that fully on YouTube or TikTok, but yeah, dude, you're right. He's just so well smoke, spoken and smart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's here's the thing. I remember growing up, uh, we used to watch my grandparents used to watch Johnny Carson all the time. They had all those old tapes. And so we would watch Johnny Carson constantly, man. Some of those shows are very interesting, man. They're very fun to go watch and look look at. You That's talk why about I love this. TikTok because they just show up like the yeah. best, it's like the highlights of them and shit. So. I'm yeah, sure one of the you were lagging out there for a second. There you go. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, this is uh, you were talking about this earlier. Um, this week yeah, I watched this today. Yeah, what'd you oh, think? This just dropped today. Yeah, <clears throat> it was cool, but it's like um, all the same. Steve-O shit. and um, what's that dork with the dorky haircut, long hair? He's like a musician. He was actually asking questions too. Um, it's like all shit we kind of already know. Nothing groundbreaking. Yeah. <clears throat> I have to be honest with you about Steve O's podcast. I tr- I've tried very hard to like it, but you could tell like he only cares about the money and the ads and all that shit. It's literally a one hour podcast and there's like 35 minutes worth of content because there's so many ads. And then he just asks every guest how much money they make all the time. It's so cringe, dude. I'm like, fuck. What yeah. The fuck? I can't stand his voice. I can get over that actually. I his love voice Steve for some though, reason drives me crazy, thing. man. It's just the podcast shit. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you yeah. know what I'm talking about? That guy that that like singer dude that's popular. Um uh no. He, he has like long hair, but the bangs are cut, and he like he was dancing on that cop car video with the big suit. He does like goofy shit. Oh yeah, Oliver Tree. Yeah, Oliver Tree is sitting in the passenger seat asking he was actually asking the better questions. He was actually yeah the better interviewer than Steve-O, to be honest with you.